Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today on Hidden Parts, a small tutorial demonstrating how to do a screen reduction print. Um, today I will be demonstrating how to do a reduction print on a t-shirt with a design of my choosing, but this process can also be repeated on paper or on fabric as I am doing, and it's a great way to express yourself as well as make either wall decorations or clothing that you can wear. So for this project you will need a good amount of materials including a printing screen, a squeegee to use on the screen to transfer your ink, um, the inks you will use, paint brushes for your screen filler, the screen filler itself, paper or fabric depending on what you want to print on, um, sponges, and Comet powder cleaner. The sponge and the powder cleaner are for cleaning up afterwards, everything else is for applying, and when you are getting a screen, keep in mind the mesh size of the screen depending on what fabric or paper you want to print on. Here you can see I have all of my materials laid out. Some essential questions to think about while you're working is what is something that you keep hidden? How can the layers of the reduction print add an element of concealment to the piece? And what colors can you use to evoke the feeling of concealment you are intending to portray? Overall, the theme for this piece is elements that are hidden to you and personal reason secrets. It doesn't have to be something overly deep, but just think about the elements that you like to keep hidden to yourself or things you don't portray all the time. Now here I'm just sketching out a loose idea for my drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't even have to be my final design. As you'll see later, I actually ended up changing my design slightly, but this gives me a good idea of where to start from. So for my piece personally, I chose, as you can see, the elements of a skull, a rose, and I'm going to be using the colors black and red. The reason for this is I want my piece to convey a theme of life and death and have that correlation of how one can't really exist without the other, but at the same time, I don't want that to be directly apparent. So that's why I'm using mostly black tones with little elements of red, hiding most of that to really draw attention to them, create that strong sense of contrast, and kind of hide other certain elements that I want to remain hidden. Here's some vocab um, directly correlated to the lesson that you'll be learning today. The first is reduction, which is the action or fact of making a specified thing smaller or less in amount, degree, or size. Think of this as reducing the overall window that you are putting the ink through and decreasing that size. Um, the other two vocab words are contrast and variety, with contrast being the state of being um, strictly different or from something else in juxtaposition or close association, and variety is the quality or state of being different or diverse. Now that I have my design sketched out on paper and everything is ready to go, I can begin to draw my design on the screen itself. So I will start with just a light sketch in pencil of my design, and once that is uh, like drawn, I will use my screen filler and paint brushes, as you see, to begin to apply the screen filler. Before you apply the screen filler, begin to apply tape around the edges, going up to as close as you can to your design without directly making a tangent. So leave about a half inch barrier around the edge of your design, but cover all other spots with tape. This will help with cleanup later. This is what it should look like when you're done taping. Now that everything has been taped, you can begin to apply your screen filler. Start with your largest brushes, working in all the large areas, and work your way down in brush size, moving towards all these smaller details and ending with the small lines that overlap. Just keep in mind um, brush size as you are working in because the screen filler is a bit finicky when spreading and it can glob up a bit on the screen. Here you can see me going over the uh, small detail lines of my piece, and once I'm done, it should look a little something like this. Now that my piece is fully like, filled and ready to print, I will line up my shirt underneath the screen itself exactly where I want it to go. And keep in mind that once you do your first print, you need to make sure your shirt or paper, whatever you're printing on, lines up the second time because if it does not, you will print over your edges and get weird lines. So just keep in mind your edge lines. So now that you have everything laid out, what you're gonna do is take your ink and you're going to spread it across the top of the screen. It doesn't take the most, um, you'll just need a little bit. 
And keep in mind for how many prints that you want, that's the amount of ink, and it will dry out quickly. So try to have a spray bottle or something to keep it hydrated if you're doing multiple prints. Luckily for me, I'm just doing the one print of a shirt. So this works out fairly nicely. But if you're doing multiple, just remember to keep everything just wet on the actual surface. Once you have your ink spread out, you will take your squeegee and you'll drag it across the surface. And as you can tell, I didn't have enough ink, so I need to add more. So now that everything's covered, what I'm gonna do is press down firmly and push to transfer the ink through the screen to my design. And make sure that you have pressure at a 45 degree angle so that all the ink carries to the surface. And once you think it looks good, you can pull it up, just making sure you hold your shirt in place. Take a quick look. And yeah, I like how that looks. Now this next step, since I have all the ink transferred and I don't want any more on my shirt, I'm going to leave my shirt where it is and remove the screen. Now to get the remaining ink out of my screen, all I have to do is run the screen underneath my bathtub and the water will clear out most of the ink. This will not work for the filler though. So now that my screen has all the ink cleaned out of it, what I will do is I will take my screen and I will begin to apply more screen filler in all of the areas that I want to stay my original color of my design. So any areas that I had with that red color that I want to remain that red, I will go over with the screen filler to make sure that they will stay red and that the black ink does not transfer through. Keep in mind that the screen filler can be a bit porous and you will want to make sure to have like evenly distributed coats that actually cover the screen. A good way to check this is to just lift up the screen and see if you can see the light passing through. While we wait for this to dry, we can connect our project to a famous artist, that being Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol is well known for his silkscreen prints, and the most famous of these being the Marilyn Monroe print. These prints allowed him to mass produce images to an almost commercial manner and kind of pointed fingers at the consumerist nature present in society. As you can see in the images, none of the prints are exactly alike, and all of the inks, although they are different, concealed certain aspects. So this really ties into our theme of hidden elements where the variety between the pieces can really add to a level of uniqueness, but also something that you conceal because there will not be a perfect cover. Personally, I hate waiting for all the screen filler to dry. It just takes so many hours and way too long. So if you want to make the screen filler dry a little bit faster, you can use a hair dryer, and this will allow it to speed up um, the process by hours and save you at least a night's worth of work. So I usually do this just to make it so I can get everything done within a day rather than multiple days. So now that I have all my holes filled that I want to keep red and everything is ready, I will attach my screen again and make sure that all of my edges line up. As I said earlier, if they do not, then the project will not turn out how you want. Um, and I will repeat the same process as earlier as I did with the red ink. I will place the black ink on the top of the screen, use the squeegee to scrape it across the surface with light pressure, not pushing it through. And once it's all evenly covered, then I'll press down at that 45 degree angle and push and transfer all of the ink onto the shirt. Here you can see the final product of my shirt and I am very happy with the design, but as you can notice, there are some small edge lines from the tape around the border and that is because the screen was still slightly wet when I transferred it and there was still some remaining ink mixed with the water. So make sure your screen is completely dry as you do your transfers, otherwise you risk possible little edge lines and things like that. Otherwise, you can put down papers or something to protect it, but overall, I am very happy with how this piece turned out. To clean your piece, 
just start by rinsing off the all of the ink with water in a tub or with a pressure washer and then afterwards you can sprinkle comet powder on the screen filler when you remove the tape and then use a sponge and a pressure washer to spray this off and scrub it off if you do not have access to a pressure washer you can use a sink so long as you have enough room to actually put the screen inside Thank you for joining me today on Hidden Parts, a tutorial demonstrating how to do a reduction screen print. I hope you enjoyed your time and I hope you are happy with the product you made. I know that I am. And as for our overall theme of Hidden Parts, I know that I am happy with using the black ink to cover those reds. I think it does a good job. And I hope you were able to achieve a similar level of happiness with your piece. Thank you.